Hello, everybody, and welcome back. And thank you for joining me today. Okay, just gotta figure out where I wanna start here. Yeah, I can see in this area, the colors are kind of going in the opposite direction as to the diagonal, so. Generally results in more threads and more color changing, but. There's lots of that in this pattern. Mm. Kiddo is out of school today, but got the house to myself. He went to work with his dad. <laughs> yeah, he enjoys uh, helping him out, pulling cable and stuff for when they're setting up computers and things. And he can earn a little extra money. He's trying to uh, save up to buy himself a, a good gaming computer because uh, he wants to play Roblox. And apparently you need a Better than just a standard computer for that. Yeah. Yeah, he currently plays one called Brick Rigs on there, which is like Lego, but virtual. And yeah, he likes building cars and then breaking them apart. You get to see the individual blocks as if they really were made out of Lego, so that's kind of fun. And then, yeah, he wants to play Roblox, but that one takes more. And it's not on the uh, Nintendo Switch, which we do have. He plays Minecraft on that one, so. Yeah, he's a gamer geek, just like his parents. <laughs> yeah, I kind of say, when we first started dating, I think we went out on maybe two, like, traditional dates. And then we just started staying in and playing video games together. <laughs> Yeah, we're both homebodies. Yeah, staying inside's not difficult for me. Although, now that the weather's getting nicer and we start going for some more walks, that'll be nice. Problem is when we're still, oh my gosh, look at that knot. What a bugger. How on earth did you even manage to do that? Oh my gosh. What, the, what a, I don't even know how I managed that. Now let's find my scissors. Let's see if I cut the end close enough if I can get it to let go sometimes well you are just gonna be a jerk aren't you no I think I may have cut that wrong yep ah I was trying to cut the free end so I could save <laughs> the rest of it but I cut it in half. Oh well. Put that half aside and carry on with the one that's still anchored. I don't even know how I did that. My gosh. <laughs> Ooh, that was very weird. Couldn't do that again on purpose if I tried, I think. And I didn't want to, uh, trying to pull it with the, uh, the needle loop through the loop. Sometimes that can release it, but that one didn't want to. It just kept sliding up and down. Oh, 
don't even know how that was attached that I, I did that. Okay. All right. Oh, look at that. My goodness. And now I came up in the wrong spot. It's not quite in the in the hole. Why? Okay, let's give that another shot. Yeah, because I was about to bring my needle up through this hole where the purple one was supposed to be parked and I saw that it was parked about a millimeter to the left of where it should be, not in the hole properly. It was splitting the fabric. So anyway, as I was saying before all that tangle mess uh, interrupted me, um, yeah, going for walks more, but still a little tough because the sidewalks get flooded and then freeze, so you have to be very, very careful, especially when we get where it's, uh, we get ice like that, and then it snows a little bit, so it covers up the uh, ice and you can't see that it's icy, and yeah, we have a joke that's uh, Canadian breakdancing. <laughs> When you're desperately trying not to fall on your butt. Oh, but your feet are going out everywhere. Yeah, I had my chiropractor say sometimes that actually causes more injury because your muscles spasm than if you just fell down. But, I mean, that's the instinct, right? You don't even think about it. You just try to keep from falling. So, yeah, I was seeing him once after a rear-ender car accident. And then uh, my back was really bad one week, and I said, yeah, because I stepped on ice and uh, managed not to fall. And that's when he told me that, yeah, lower back was about to spasm there. So, unfortunately, better now. Yeah, that was my first rear-ender. I had another one back in December. Uh, unfortunately, because... um. They always happen near my son's school and because there's, you know, it's closed space and less experienced drivers because there's a lot of, you know, younger kids, younger teenagers or older teenagers, I should say, um, driving their younger siblings to school. So, yeah. But they said my car is still fixable, so very glad because I'm rather sentimentally attached to that car. I like it. It's a, it's a Honda Element. They don't make those anymore. Yeah. And because I rarely go out of town, if I go out of town, then we take my husband's truck and he's the one driving. So I don't put very much uh, mileage on it. So I'm hoping to get another 10 years, cross fingers, uh, of driving out of it at least. It's an older car, 13 years, but yeah, it's been driven just for me to pick up kiddo from school, get groceries, run errands, that sort of thing. So yeah, it doesn't have a lot of mileage on it. Okay, I think I'm actually going to unthread this one. Yeah, and just set it aside now. That one is still threaded. Okay, I'll try not to tangle myself. Okay, so that one there is still threaded. It's right on the line, but because it's still threaded, I will do one more stitch before parking and unthreading. Yeah, and then my latest rear ender got uh, hit while my foot was on the brake, so that really messed up my... Uh, my right hip for a while, but uh, thankfully my chiropractor is really good. Got that sorted out for me within a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see there's going to be multiple threads again. Quite a lot of this color here. 
It's in kind of weird shapes. <laughs> Shading for trees, I think. Yeah, and then the columns are, let's see, about 30 stitches away, three more diagonals away before we start getting to the, the pillar on the far right. Or the first of the two pillars, right? And then it will be time for another pass across the pattern. I have a uh, Three more to go. You had someone say, wow, you're stitching this up really fast. I said, yes. I was thinking, okay, because sometimes it feels really slow to me because there's so many stitches that percentage counter is, it moves very slowly, right? I think I get, oh, geez, takes me a week to get it to move another percentage point. Something like that, so, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, the uh, the designer of the Pattern Keeper software knew what they were doing when they, they counted it out to um, hundredths of a percentage point there. So at least you can see some movement. It's not just 54 right now, it's 54.46. So yeah, you can see they're making progress even if it feels slow. These, uh, these projects are generally, are, are uh, yeah, a marathon and not a sprint, that is for sure. Well, some days, especially when there's a lot of color changes, even getting it to move the hundredth of a point or a tenth of a point can feel like it is never going to happen. like when they measure those things for you like on my kindle now it uh i like how it um it, no it learns your reading speed and then um will tell you how much time you have left in the book or in the chapter which is kind of nice because uh you know with a paper book if it was okay i'm gonna read one more chapter i'd have to flip through manually see how many pages they were and guess how long that would take me in the kindle Measuring it is pretty accurate, I find, as to how much time I've got left. Because, yeah, there's a difference between one more chapter if it's, you know, three or four minutes as opposed to one that's really long and is 20 minutes, right? Yeah. Although, um, there was a podcast I was listening to, and one lady said she actually had to turn that off because... She found she was always trying to race with herself to see if she could finish it faster than what the Kindle was estimating. Um, it would take, and then of course it was no longer relaxing, right? Uh, she reads to relax and that was making it stressful. So I could see that. So yeah, you can toggle it so it can tell you just what page you're on if it has true pages or just the location because all of the books will have a location or you can actually toggle it so that that little display in the bottom left doesn't show anything and just read. So, yeah, when you read really long books on that Kindle, that percentage and timer can just seem to never move. Okay, so this is long enough I could have parked it, but I have another thread parked lower that is a little closer. So I'm going to end this one off. Make sure I didn't catch a loop on the back. Nope, I'm good. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to carry on from that one. It just made more sense to me that way. So, And at the, the other one that's parked there is a long thread I checked. So it will be long enough to carry on and do those other stitches there. Okay, short one, no point in parking. In fact, I probably chose this to be a short one on purpose because there's only one stitch sort of here and the next one's fairly far away. There we go. 
Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I was talking about going for walks before. I also found this, um, where I live, they did not plan out the sidewalks very well. It definitely planned out for people driving everywhere. I discovered that when my son was really little. And I try to go for walks with him in the stroller and the, um, the sidewalks will just end abruptly with no warning and you end up having to backtrack where there aren't enough um, crosswalks. And you have to go quite a ways out of your way to cross safely. Yeah, they, they definitely don't build, did not design the city for pedestrians. We do have really good parking, lots of parking, but yeah, I do wish there was a bit more encouragement for walking. So yeah, my son was quite a colicky baby, but he really liked being outside and looking at the trees. So... Yeah, when he got really crabby, put him in the stroller and we'd go for a walk when it was warm enough. Get some fresh air and exercise, that never hurts, right? Yeah, and he'd look at all at the trees. He liked when the wind would rustle the leaves and make him giggle. It was pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be 15 soon, my goodness. Time just flies by. Almost as tall as his dad now, who is uh, six inches taller than me, so. Yeah. Happens fast. And they're going to get to do driver's ed training at school. We didn't have that when I was in high school. Maybe it's a regional thing because I went somewhere else. Or maybe they brought it back. But yeah, I did not get my driver's license until I was 24. <laughs> I couldn't afford lessons. Parents didn't teach me, so my husband actually taught me. Well, and before where I lived, there was a really good um, public transit system at the time. And it was, you know, 40 bucks for a one month unlimited pass. So, yeah, it was a really good deal. You know, no worries about maintenance, repairs, things breaking down or gas. And, uh, yeah. So that was what I used, but now here, where I live, the, there is no public transit. In fact, they even got rid of the, uh, the Greyhound, too. There are other bus, but yeah, Greyhound was sort of a institution. So it's really the end of, the, of an era to see that go. Yeah, I've seen a few of those. My first job that wasn't, you know, a paper route or babysitting. First actual job job where you had to, you know, to pay into a income tax and such um, was a seasonal job for Christmas at Zeller's. That's um, basically Canada's version of Walmart that we had for quite a long time. And uh, they went out of business years back is it coming on to 10 years now yeah and uh that made me quite sad because i grew up with zellers and yeah now it's gone i still have all my christmas stuff is from uh, zellers yeah 
my uh, my glass Christmas tray and a bunch of the decorations and Christmas tree stand came from there. Oh, even our fake Christmas tree came from there. Yeah, so I always get quite nostalgic every year when I pull those out. Yeah, they tried to bring uh, Target into place here in Canada where the Zellers used to be, but it flopped. Well, they took so long with the renovations that by the time they opened, everybody had started shopping somewhere else and it's hard to get them to sort of change their routine, right? So yeah, Target, I think lasted maybe, maybe a year here in Canada. It didn't last very long. So yeah, we're just stuck with Walmart now, but I've seen lots of chains go in my lifetime. We had Woolworths that got bought out by Walmart. Kmart's gone. Zeller's is gone. We had Fields, which I don't know is if it's still around or not, but if it is, there aren't very many locations left. And San was S-A-A-N. That was another Canadian store and that I believe is gone now. At least they don't have a uh, location where I live anymore. Yeah, seen a lot. Oh, Eaton's. Yeah, that seemed like one of those institutions that was never going to go away, but that went away in the uh, early 90s or mid 90s and uh i think the bay the hudson's bay company is finally shutting down which i was actually surprised it lasted this long when all the other department stores have pretty much closed down it's so funny i didn't realize when i was a kid that the bay the uh, department store and the hudson's bay company that we studied about in social studies class were the same thing until um we went on a shopping trip to uh to vancouver so of course they had a really really big uh bay store there and it said the hudson's bay company with the colored you know little stripes and i was like wait a minute that's the same thing <laughs> oh i didn't feel very smart then but i hadn't caught on to that feels like it should have been obvious but it wasn't well that was one i saw when they said you know where restaurants and hotels or whatever can have the uh, michelin star how many michelin stars they have and that it is yes that is michelin stars in the michelin tire company people thought it was a different thing you know they said why the heck is a tire company telling you what are good places to eat food at like yeah go figure right <laughs> Ooh. but i guess it was for if you're traveling here's a good hotel here's a good restaurant you know Ooh. Yeah, like we still have things like Walmart, but uh, they're really not the same as those old department stores. It's just, just isn't. I mean, I remember all the old department stores, especially having those beds made up to show you the bedding sets and how they were always so padded that the bed was like this dome shape so no one could ever actually sleep in it. <laughs> uh. But yeah. It's hard to explain, but places like Walmart, yes, they have different departments, but they don't have the same feel as those old department stores. Maybe because those old department stores were, you know, founded in a different era. Right? Some of those were around for 100, 200 years. <clears throat> it was interesting. There was a BBC show called um, The Paradise, which was about a fictional one about one of the first department stores and it was uh interesting to watch you know the um the founder would come up with these wild ideas that everybody said wouldn't work which of course we know did work you know he would have sales across the entire department store people would say Are you you know you're you're crazy that's not gonna work well of course we all know that that did we were always flocking to the department store when they were having a store-wide sale why wouldn't you <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that. Went on for two seasons before they uh, ended it. First season was the best, I have to say. The second season was kind of really rushed at the end. They set up all these problems that, you know, looked unsolvable. And then it was sort of like, oh, well, we'll just wrap them up all in five minutes. No problem. Like, I guess I'm guessing they were hoping for renewal 
to get more time to tell the story and then they got canceled and so they just had to quickly quickly end everything so that it wouldn't uh there wouldn't be anything left unexplained but yeah unfortunately the pacing felt pretty off there but ah i still enjoyed it i watched the whole series a couple of times Yeah, I actually bought it on DVD, but I think now it's one of those you can watch on Prime if you have uh, either a BritBox or a, a PBS um, add-on for like 10 bucks a month. So I haven't done that yet, but I might at some point, especially if you like, um, if you like mystery detective kind of shows, uh, BritBox is really good for that because they've got lots of you know, they got like 40 series of those. They got um, uh, Inspector Morse and Father Dowling and yeah, all sorts of them. Uh, Midsommar Mysteries. The first 20 seasons, yes, 20, <laughs> are um, included with Prime. And then after that, you have to buy the BritBox subscription. So I haven't. But 20 seasons was a lot. It was really good. And each um, <clears throat> each episode was um, 90 minutes, not 45. So, yeah, you'd only get, like, six to eight episodes, but they were, like, movies. Yeah, so I enjoyed that. Yeah, the first half of the series, the main character was... um. Tom Barnaby and then his um cousin John can't remember which one was first but yeah took over so <laughs> they barely had to change anything hmm. yeah I really like mystery shows yeah they revived um the original CSI because of course I watched all of those and uh so they rebooted original CSI it's now the new one's called CSI Vegas, but of course that's where it was always set, was in Vegas. And they actually brought back some of the original characters, so yeah, I quite enjoyed that. And they have renewed it for another season, so I'm hoping it's going to go on for a while because the first, the first reiteration of it, or iteration of it, went on for, uh... I think it was 15 seasons. Yeah, it went on for a good long time. I used to be too squeamish to watch it, but now it doesn't bother me. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's just enough to do that stitch there. So, perfect. So, depending on how long this piece is, I'll decide what to do with it. But either way, yeah, I'm going to end up with another thread. That's okay. So, I'm going to do these two here. Park it there. And then I'm going to do another thread to do these bits here. But I'm actually going to do yeah, this first. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of a lot of PBS shows. They do some amazing, amazing work, especially with, I find their costuming is second to none for their historical dramas. Not always historically accurate, but I enjoy them anyway. Yeah, they did um, Young Queen Victoria, and uh, supposedly there may be a fourth season, but so far it hasn't. I mean, well, COVID interrupted everything, right? Plus, if um, they keep telling Victoria's story, they're probably going to have to recast the part to get someone a bit older. 
Yeah. I enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, Poldark series, which was based on a set of novels um, about a mining town in uh, Cornwall. I have to say, the last season was not as good, and that was because they ran out of books to adapt. So they kind of had to carry on their own way. And I think I could, you could tell. It was still good. I still enjoyed it, but it wasn't quite as good as the first four seasons. Yeah, you can kind of tell when they, they run out of the original source material and they have to kind of figure out where to go from here. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. Becomes more fanfic, right? Same characters that the original author created, but you're writing your own stories about them. I enjoyed some fanfic of uh, Jane Austen's stuff. It's really hit or miss. Because I read one that was somebody wrote as a sequel to Pride and Prejudice, but in it, Mr. Darcy was still a, you know, a tied up frump. And I was like, no, he changed. <laughs> that was sort of the whole point of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, you know, he became a little less buttoned up, so... And they do some really weird stuff like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't know whose idea that was. Yeah, that was one I did not watch or read. Uh... Yeah, and supposedly Netflix was going to make a TV series of the Narnia books, but they haven't done it yet. They bought the rights, but they haven't done anything with it yet. And I really like that because, yeah, they the books were a bit big to try to adapt to um, to movies. I know there was the 1988 BBC adaptation of um, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was about three hours long. So, uh, yeah, that one did pretty good justice, but they did a couple of others, and they were good, but not as good as the first one I found. Yeah, I'm really enjoying um, this age of television where they can uh, they can really do justice to these big books instead of trying to cut down into a couple of hours. Oh my goodness, let's try that again. Yeah, I actually shared a meme the other day where it had, you know, Lord of the Rings fans, okay, you've spent three pages describing the tree. Stop describing it and then Tolkien, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna describe it more. Somebody said, is there a graphic novel adaptation? Because that would be nice. Then you could get, you know, three, four pages of a description of a tree into one panel, one picture, right?
I had more patience for that when I was uh, a younger reader, but now I'm just like, okay, get to the point. <sighs> I don't need to know about every button on the person's clothes. Just tell me what they're going to do, right? Are they talking? Are they doing something? Get to it. Okay, once again, a lot of confetti here. Was sorting to see if I had a piece of thread that was long enough to just do these two stitches, but no, I'm going to do them as separate little pieces that I saved. So that's just how it's going to work out. Double checking with my grid that I'm in the right place.
this one was yeah just long enough for one stitch yeah there we go Bunny just went hopping down my street. <laughs> yeah, we have the one who visits us and saw him go running by. Okay, there we go. It's almost about to be in the wrong spot. Don't want to do that. Oh my gosh. Trying to decide which thread I want to carry where. Okay, I think I see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to park it down over here. Yep. Yeah. And then, okay, so. First, I gotta do, yeah, either way, I gotta do just one of this and park. I can't do them both at the same time. Well, I could, but I don't want to close in anything. So, that one. Let's see how long this one is. Oh yeah, that'll work quite nicely. All these in the corners. Okay, and then that will be in the next diagonal. Same with this thread, too. Okay. Now, this one's not threaded, so I'm going to just leave sort of that whole corner aside for now. Alright. So 
So yeah, I got sort of a whole bunch here done. Carry on. Okay, this should be just long enough to do one more. So we're gonna do that. And then the other ones can have a new thread joined in the next section when I get to it. Okay. over and decide what I'm going to do with that. Yeah, quite scattered. So there's going to be some multiple threads as usual. So yeah, we can see that percentage point moved a bit. It was like 54.43, now it's 54.49. So as this is longer, I'm going to carry it down to the left instead of to that one by itself down to the right. They're about the same, the same ways away. So if I can find the spot that is, there we go.
such a bright blue color here amongst all these browns and beiges. Must be the sky showing through or something. But as I said before, I'll trust the pattern. This designer has not uh, not steered me wrong before. Josh Groban's song stuck in my head. <laughs> Actually, I haven't listened to it for a while, but for some reason it's there in my brain. Yeah, I love Josh Groban. I actually discovered him because um, my husband bought an old computer for someone, and uh, it was in the music files. His first three albums. Yeah, that got me hooked. I've bought everything he's done since. <laughs> Like he did a version of um, the theme from Romeo and Juliet in uh, Italian. So I don't understand the words, but I know the tune, and it's yeah, it's really beautiful.
Actually, I have a few versions of that song I really like. Um, there's some. Um, the Philharmonic Orchestra of Prague did a version of it that. Uh, well, I discovered it because a uh, user hand you skated to it for. Um, is it his 2014 Olympic program? I think. Not sure, but uh, yeah. And then uh, Andre Ryu, which I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, also has a really beautiful version. He can make the violin cry. One um, artist I really like is um, one called uh, Nothing But Strings, which was two brothers who play the violin, but they they play it with like a rock-inspired influence. They were on um, America's Got Talent in 2006, I believe. And I think they only have the one album, but uh, yeah, they did some really nice um, original music and it's sort of like a hip hop beat with the violins. It sounds amazing. You should definitely check it out. Oh, I thought I'd missed a stitch, but it's such a light color that it's actually done. <laughs> so yeah, if I remember, I'll try to remember to put a, um, a link to that album in the, uh, in the description and uh, in the comments. I'll have to check if they made any more albums or just that one. Bought it a while ago. But yeah, I really like it. I think my favorite of theirs was, um, well, they have one called Broken Sorrow, which is, uh, well, a mournful sound kind of song. Very beautiful. And, um, and they have, yeah, orchestral backup, but also um, also rock instruments, too. So it's it's a really interesting blend. You Probably nothing you would ever hear on the radio, but yeah. I like a lot of um, lesser known, unusual sound like that. And then they have one that's called uh, Egypt in the Night. And it's, yeah, like a kind of, well, Egyptian-inspired sound with the hip-hop. It's really, really cool. Yeah, so those are ones that, you know, I go through my music collection and kind of rotate what songs are in my, um, my phone. But uh, there are some artists that never get rotated out because I never get sick of them. And... Nothing But Strings is definitely one of those. Okay, whole oh, whack ton of threads in this area, that's for sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is kind of split it up, go down and back up because I can still avoid closing in stitches. So sometimes I will just say, you know, this is so close to each other that I do it out of order, but I can see that there is a way that I can fiddle my way around it, so I'm gonna... Your mileage may vary. Okay. Yeah, for some people, they may find that uh, switching threads and needles is so much work they'd rather just not do that. And that's valid. Stitch your way. Do what works for you. I've seen some where people stitch huge pieces without any kind of frame or stand or anything. They just stitch it in hand. Wow. Yeah, I think that would annoy me, but uh, certainly possible. 
that's what works for you, then do it that way. Don't let anybody tell you you're wrong. You're happy with it. That's all that matters. People need to not gatekeep stuff, hey? Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing really annoys me. You know, when somebody discovers something new, they're interested in the fandom. It's like, well, you're not a real fan if you don't do X, X, and Y, or, you know, you don't, uh, you don't know this obscure piece of trivia or whatever. Like, come on, guys, let's let people enjoy things, right? Liking things shouldn't be stressful. You shouldn't have to know every little obscure fact about something to enjoy it, right? You know, there's so many things out there trying to suck the joy out of life. Let's not add to it. <laughs> okay. Wow, still over 8,000 of this color left in this pattern. That is a lot. So there are two ways I could go about this little bit. Is I'm going to do these two up here before I park. And... So what I could have done, I could do is I could do these two. I could park it in this one and carry down to the left, or I could park it this one and carry it up to the right. And that is what I'm going to do because there are more stitches in the next diagonal. If I did it the top and sort of carry down, then I have to end the thread. This way I have a chance to get more use out of the thread without having to stop and start again. Because, yeah, I don't always travel down. Sometimes, if it makes more sense that way, I carry the threads upwards. Some people are very disciplined about it, where they only ever carry in one direction. They don't park in the next diagonal, I've seen. Or some only park in the current diagonal, but they end off their threads so they have a nice, clean sort of edge to start again with parked threads. But I prefer to, um, I prefer to carry on when I can not stop and start when it's not necessary. So that is why I decided, let's try that again. There we go. That is why I decided to do it that way. It's sort of even to travel to the right or to the left, but in the long run, I will get more use out of the thread if I go down and work my way back up. So that is why I chose to park it there. As I've said before, there's a method to my madness. Watch me long enough and you may figure it out too. Okay, so I think, yeah, I'm gonna stop here. I've had a nice longer session today. So um, thank you for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.